heading to Bristol, Connecticut, a small town with a burning problem. For the past couple of winters, this suburban town has suffered from a rash of devastating fires. It all started with an arsonist who trapped his mother in a deadly blaze. The following year, the downtown area was ravaged by flames. Could it be another arsonist or Mother Nature at her worst? What's next? That's what Megafires is here to find out. Let's meet the team. We basically crawled into a flamethrower. No fire is worth another person's life. Firefighters are a little superstitious. We believe things run in cycles. And if your shift hasn't been out for quite a while or on anything uh, which we would consider a large incident, we feel that your number is coming up. We're brewing for a fire, I think. Everybody here has got a little bit of an itch. When you're at the firehouse, I never really get a good night's sleep. I'm always like half awake. Tensions run high as the crew waits. Endless scenarios race through their minds. A car accident, a house fire, or even people trapped in a smoldering apartment building. I just came home and there's a ton of smoke coming out of my neighbor's apartment. Please hurry. I think there's a fire. It looks really bad. There's a little bit of an adrenaline rush every time the bell goes off. That alarm can sometimes be very jarring. It'll startle you. First thing I think of is whether it's my house or a neighbor's house. Sometimes in the middle of the night, just you know, sliding down the pole and getting your gear on is a is a task in itself. Wondering what you're going to, you know, it's that's the best part of the job. Well, on arrival, I've got to decide as a beanie officer. I got to decide what type of fire it is, how intense the fire is going to be, the possibility of a vacant house, is it occupied, is it a business? Our main job is life safety. It's a cold time of the year, so for heating, they may turn the heat up, they may heat with alternative fuels, light up their environment with candles, and then you throw in the effects of alcohol and forgetfulness, and, and people don't tend to uh, be careful with fire, especially this time of the year. Somebody pull an alarm down there? An alarm there? pulled down there? The crew searches for the source of the alarm. Is it an electrical fire? An overturned candle? Perhaps the victim is too injured to respond. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, we get called for ridiculous stuff. We had a, one that came in as a house fire and it was literally a mop on fire in the front yard. We get random zany stuff all the time. Like here we have nine guys, you know, we eat, we sleep, we, we hang out together, we're, we're like family. Oh, this is going to be a wreck of our mischief. Duct tape the bottom of his bed so when he gets in, can't get his feet down there. <laughs> we'll get the big one later, right, Buzz? Yeah, after 10. His feet won't go past two feet down or something like that, and he'll get all stuck. And in the middle of the night, no one wants to wake up the rest of the guys, so he'll quietly stew for the rest of the evening. We'll hear about it tomorrow, but it's well worth it. There's always the, the weird uncle that nobody likes and the, the bitchy sister, but, you know, it's, it's a brotherhood and sisterhood. Whatever they need done, we always have to help each other. On the job and outside the job, if you need a hand outside of work, make a phone call, they're there. Holy shit, the garage down on Main Street's on fire, man. Someone needs to get down here fast. I think the place is, like, gonna blow up or something. The team races to the scene of a three-alarm fire as an automotive garage is burning out of control. Tires, oil, and other chemicals are consumed as the fire reaches temperatures of over 600 degrees. Will they arrive in time to contain the blaze before it spreads throughout the neighborhood? The tower crew goes in for a quick search to determine if there's anybody in the building. We do a combative command here because we don't have enough personnel, so... And I'm always the one who wants to go in anyway, so... Most of the guys on the job have no time on. The last guy I interviewed on eight months on, my tail end guys got a year and a half. It was beyond uh, what we expected when we first got there, what we were told. Uh, when we got inside that garage, it was all concentrated in one area and we were in it. 
The crews must battle a variety of toxic chemical fumes in addition to the fire's incredible heat. We basically crawled into a flamethrower. A little scary. One way in, one way out. Aluminum wheels, magnesium wheels going off, getting hit with water, and they flashed. Got a little nervous. They were storage bins, wire mesh bins. Couldn't get out. We live off of that fear. That's what we want. That's why we're here. I was the first guy again into the building. I was on my fourth air tank when the ceiling collapsed. I felt the guy grabbing me. I heard something sizzling and didn't realize it was me. I was in with my officer at the time. He was a little nervous too, but we figured a way out and we got out okay. We both took our mask off. I said, who are you? It's his first day in a job. This guy, his first day in a job, he's with me in a major fire. And when I went up there, I had no idea. I had a guy that had no experience was with me in a major fire. There's a banter that goes on, a kind of self-soothing back and forth, and uh, then we clean up our equipment and get ready to go again. I don't think anybody can really comprehend what happens during one of those fires. Try to, try to outrun a car down the street at 30 miles an hour and pretend that car is a fire coming at you. You gotta have some smarts to, to really know what you're doing. A forest burns out of control. Only a brave few dare to jump into the ring of fire. They are the smoke jumpers. <laughs>